So you want to create some high quality short form content, but you don't know where to start. In this video, I'm gonna unbox my top five tips for creating high quality YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. Now, these are some of the mistakes that I made over the last two years, starting up with short form content. And thank you to all of you who have subscribed through the short form content. There are over 200, 240,000 of you in the last year alone, which is absolutely insane. Getting started, I'm just gonna throw my camera settings on the screen. We're gonna get those out of the way really quick. Now, some people will ask 24 frames, 30 frames. Oh boy, this is really tough. And honestly, it doesn't make too much of a difference. My recommendation would be to go with the frame rate that looks the best for you. I will say I shoot a majority of my content in log, which just helps with some of the color grading afterwards. Something you're probably not even thinking about because you haven't realized it is audio. But audio plays a huge part in your content. Ideally, you don't want people to be aware of your bad audio. But if your audio sounds echoey or reverby or you're too far away from the microphone, then it's not gonna sound good. Thankfully, there are a lot of different audio options and some of them are really affordable. Now, these mics are shotgun mics and they're what I'd recommend to the majority of people because you can put them you can take them and put them on the top of your camera. And so now whether you're out, oh my gosh. <laughs> and so now whether you're out vlogging or you have your camera set up on a tripod, you have one mic that will pretty much work in 99% of scenarios. The other option is one of these. Now, a lot of companies make these wireless lav mics and they come in all different shapes and sizes. This is one from Hollyland, but Small Rig makes them, DJI makes them, Rode makes them. The more money you spend on one, the better quality it's gonna be. This is kind of a middle of the road one, but essentially you would just clip it here. You would take this guy, plug that into your camera, and then that way you can be far away from your camera or you can be really close and the audio will still sound the same. So I'll link some options down below, starting at like $50 for the cheapest option, going all the way up to probably like $250 for this Rode NTG, which is probably my go-to mic for the majority of the content that I'm shooting right now. Once you've nailed your audio, my next recommendation is to look at lighting. Now, even if you don't wanna spend hundreds of dollars on your lights, actually, you can check out this video here for a demo of how to set up your lights or how I set up my lights, but even something as simple as standing next to a window can really elevate the quality of your content. So what you don't wanna do, is this, if I turn off my big softbox diffuser, then the lighting doesn't look that great. Yeah, I've still got all my background lights, but you can't really see me. So be strategic about your lighting, light your subject so that they're not sitting in the dark. Coming from photography, which is what I've been doing for the last 10, 12 years to now doing video, lighting was probably the biggest thing that made a difference in the quality of my content. It helped me understand photography more because with photography, you can kind of cheat, you can kind of open up Lightroom and you know add masks and tweak things. But with video, you're really stuck with the way things are filmed, mostly speaking. And again, I'll link all of my lighting down in the section, comment section, caption, description down below so you can check out some options that I recommend. Once you've nailed your lighting, the next step is to really refine your video settings. So when you're shooting indoors, you can pretty much set up your camera and you're good to go, as long as you have a mic and you have a light. But if you're shooting outdoors, that's when you need some extra pieces of equipment. If you're shooting outdoors, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting an ND filter. It's, it's pretty much an essential requirement. It doesn't really matter which one you get, as long as you have one that's about one to five stops. Now, what an ND filter does is it goes on the front of your lens and you can probably see how dark it is. 
that's because that's what it does. It darkens the footage or the light or removes light coming into your camera. Now, when you're shooting, you really wanna maintain that 180 degree shutter rule, which says, let's say you're shooting at 24 frames per second. What you wanna do is set your shutter speed to one over 50. Essentially, you're taking your frame rate and you're multiplying it by two. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, set your shutter to one over 60. That allows you to get this really natural looking motion blur. Like if you see when I'm waving my hand, it's kind of got this blur to it. That's because I've set my frame rate to one over 50 or one over 48, depending on your camera, which will allow you to get that more natural looking footage. And this one's actually a variable ND filter. So you can go really dark to not so dark. And there are a ton of these. Like you don't have to buy, you don't have to buy this one. There are other cheaper options and if you're looking for an ND filter, you can check out this video for me comparing like eight different ND filters to see which one's best and which one works for you. Regardless of what camera you're shooting on, whether it's a high quality mirrorless camera, but even if you're not shooting on a high-end mirrorless camera and you're just shooting on your iPhone, remember that none of that matters if you don't have high quality information. In the age of high speed, short form content, it's important to remember to keep things as concise as possible. Every time I create a piece of content, I like to think, what is it that would keep me interested in this video? Like if you're going on for 10 minutes about something and you still haven't gotten to the point, 50% of your audience is already gone. So get rid of those long drawn out intros and get to the point as soon as possible. Another thing you can ask yourself, is this a piece of content that if I came across it on my feed that I would share with someone else? Like think of all the times you've had a friend send you a funny TikTok video or some sort of really interesting piece of short form content from YouTube. What was it that made them send it to you? And what was it when they send it to you that made you keep watching? Maybe it was funny or maybe it was educational or there was something in it that made you go, hey, that's really awesome. I wanna check that thing out or I wanna save this for later. So when I'm going on vacation in that area or visiting that restaurant, this is something that I'm gonna wanna remember. I also think it's really important to be personal in your content. Like people relate more to other people than they do to just a highlight reel of amazing looking footage. Like how many times have you been scrolling on TikTok or shorts or Instagram reels and you come across a guy and you're like, oh, that's the guy that does this. That's, that's the train guy. Or that's the drone guy who does the funny dances. You know who I'm talking about. The point is you remember people more than you do the actual things that it was that you saw in those videos. But by far the biggest mistake I see people making and the biggest thing that everyone should focus on in all of their content is just providing enough examples or providing proof of the things that you're actually talking about. This is by far the one thing that lacks in so much of the content that you see online. Someone will share a tip or a piece of information but not provide any actual proof of the thing that it is they're talking about. And in the day and age of AI, where you can literally just ask ChatGPT, hey, give me five pieces of information for this, or tell me what the best blank is. If all you're doing is just regurgitating information, then the information isn't actually validated. In a recent video, I talked about five mistakes that I've made going from photo to now doing video. And one of those mistakes as a photographer is not understanding movement. In that short, which I think I can link up here, so I'll, I'll link it up there. I essentially talked about how with photography, you're so used to everything being static. But with video, you have this third dimension of being able to move and being able to show things things. So inside of that reel, instead of just showing static solid images or static videos, I actually showed examples of videos where there was movement involved, which goes along with the thing that I've been unboxing, which you probably just wonder, what the heck is Anthony opening here? There are literally so many <laughs> boxes. <laughs> it's foam. It's a foam placeholder battery. Apparently I'm supposed to put a 
the battery right there. But uh, this is a slider, which I just got in. And like the example with camera movement, what this is designed to do, it's not fully set up. I'm gonna have to do it after this, but essentially you put your camera on there and then it slides back and forth and you can program it and do a whole bunch of fun camera movements, time-lapse photography and all, all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned for more from this. Hopefully that helped you if you're someone who's thinking about starting short form content. It is literally one of the most essential things you can do, whether you're starting a business, whether you are a content creator, YouTuber, whatever, having that side thing of short form content because you know we're all on our phones, we're all scrolling, and we all really want to be visible. You want your business to get seen, you want your long form to be connected to short form so that you know when people discover you on short form, they can then make their way over to your long form content. It is just so extremely valuable and something that no content creator should be neglecting. Now I have to clean up my room because there are boxes just everywhere. So if you enjoyed this, go ahead, hit the subscribe, leave a comment down below. What's something that you've discovered through creating short form content or what would you like to know more about? And uh, hopefully I'll cover it in, a, in an upcoming video. And until the next one, go shoot photos.